Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and today we're doing some watercolor practice Christmas trees or winter trees to create some cute little Christmas cards. I go over this step by step how to do the trees and the cards. Um, really easy. I know you guys can make these trees, and then once you make the trees, you can turn, you can take them and put them in all kinds of you know scenes to make create really cute cards. Um, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the simple log cabin sketch and the reindeer, but I have a reference photo for the little deer that you can use. And the, the reference photo is actually for like a summertime deer, but we're going to use them in winter scene. And you can always do that. Go online and look at um, reference photos for all kinds of things and just change out the scenery. So if you're not a Patreon member, you can just check it out up here. I have ad free videos, traceables, uh, downloads, and um, live stream once a month on the top tier and exclusive tutorials on Thursdays weekly. It's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get painting some winter scenes. Okay, to start, we'll go over some supplies. Um, I have a piece of scrap arch, 100% cotton cold pressed paper here. You can use whatever scrap you have. I'm just I'm gonna be using this to play around with some trees because we're gonna be doing some practice trees and then we're gonna create the cards. Um, paper towels. My brushes I'll be using today are Princeton 8 and 4 Long Round Velvet Touch Series brush. And we have water jars here. So this is a practice beginning to get you used to doing trees and then you can incorporate them in all kinds of cards that you're going to do. As I show you, I put in like a log cabin and um, like a reindeer in the front. Really simple kind of you know ideas. It doesn't have to be a log cabin and a reindeer. It could be a little mouse, it could be a little bird, it could be, well, I don't know if they put a bird in the ground, but you'd put a rabbit. Um, go back and look at some of my tutorials I have on animals and you just shrink it down and then you can put the trees in the background. So if you have to have a guide, you know, obviously you just take a pencil and just draw a straight line down to figure out where you want the trees. It might help you, you know, just a simple straight line. I'll be working with the Princeton 8 right now. So I'm going to mix up some colors. So obviously some greens. I have my uh, Prussian blue, which make a nice deep green right here. And of course, mix it with my cadmium yellow deep. I activated this and still kind of like not moving. So you get this nice bright green. I always like to add a little burnt umber just to get a little bit darker. You could keep it bright, you know, if you wanted a light green, I have the cabin yellow deep and the peacock blue makes a lighter medium green, like a Kelly green and add more yellow. Of course, it makes it lighter and then I add a little, I like to add a little brown. You don't have to do that. You know, and then of course we'll need brown for the, <laughs> for the tree itself. So I like to have burnt umber. I'll add a little color. People, people say, what's neutral tint? It actually is a color. It's called Neutral Tint, W357. It was gifted to me from a patron, which I appreciate. And actually, I really like it. She really likes it, and I really like it. And so you mix those two, and you have a nice deep brown. And you can have the burnt umber over here and have like another brighter red brown. So you want some greens, different kind of greens. Sometimes you just take the Prussian blue itself and bleed it into the green to make it deeper. I do that a lot. Um, grab some more yellow again. So that's more of a blue green. Add a little brown. So you get a bunch of different greens working here. All right. A couple ways to start. A couple of the trees. There's all kinds of like pine trees. Oh, and I'm sorry. I'm completely blanking out on one particular tree. So in the background of these cards, um, <laughs> we're going to have some pale gray trees. And they can be in the blue tones or the green tones. So I've got the neutral tint, which is kind of a gray. I'm going to add a little um, ultramarine blue. I'm like mine on the blue tones. I'm going to water this down. I really want this light. I'm going to add a little more blue. So we want some of the background trees of those card designs to be like a pale, pale gray. I have my paper towel here. I'm just tapping the extra color off. So you water that gray down and we're just going to tilt my paper on the sides. It's easy to do that. I'm not going to use a pencil for this, but you can use your brush for this. 
you just take a brush and go down straight, right? And then you just do this wiggle movement. You take it and you're pushing, pushing, leaving. There's, there's a lot of water on mine, so I can actually soak up some of that on my brush back again. Just kind of wiggle. See? Wiggle back and forth. And you're going to go into a triangle kind of shape. If you need a guide, lightly draw in a pencil of a triangle. Um, but I feel like if you do that, you're going to be stuck to that shape and then you're not going to see how nice and loose you can get. So our outer trees will be this pale. Mine's, you know, it will dry a little bit lighter. I might want to go a shade lighter than this. And you can keep it in the like gray green shades. But you see how simple that was? You just wiggle in your brush back and forth. Just like that. It should dry lighter. And those would be the background trees. Those are simple trees you can just whip up. You would paint those first before you start sticking the green trees on top. So the green trees on top. So grab my deeper brown. I'm going to have less water in this one. See, I'm grabbing more paint, making it less wet. And I can always tap off the extra on my paper towel, which I do a lot. So I might do a nice pencil line, I mean, pen line, pen, paintbrush line down. I'll make the trunk wider on the bottom, and I'm just giving myself a guide. So if I want to grab some burnt umber, make like a real trunk, a true trunk, a little bit thicker. So I'm doing thinner at the top and thicker on the bottom. Kind of like a skinny triangle, right? Clean off my brush. doesn't matter if it's still wet with that. I'm going to play around with these dark greens. This one wasn't dark enough. So I'm going to add some more burnt umber and some more Prussian blue. Okay. Remember, this is practice. So we're going to do this movement sweeping downward. Down. And leaving spaces in between. See, I'm kind of just doing this rough. Do, do, do. Rough downward. Now, it's kind of looking like a flat green. I like to do this thing where I pick up other colors on my brush at the same time. So I grab that pretty light green. And I have the dark green on the brush as well. And then I can go back in and kind of push it in there too. So we're doing this simpler tree. Again, leaving spaces in between. We want that space. And like little ones down here. And swoop here. See, I left little pieces here and there. And we want this tree to look kind of like this. I'll clean off my brush. I want to grab some burnt umber on my brush. And I want to do a little bit of this brown sprays coming off as well. And this is just another type of tree we're going to be painting. It can all be like a Christmas tree. It'll be boring. So like that, a little rough like that. You, you can always, like I said, if you have a light green, you can just bleed in some like Prussian blue, just kind of tap it in and makes it like nice deep blue green. Same thing with the brown. I'll just grab a little brown, kind of put that in there. I'll add little spikes in the bottom here. I keep the brown pretty light in the bottom. All right, you got two types of trees here for this kind of card design. Let's do like a typical Christmas tree. That's how I would do it. And you can do it any way you want to do it. Grabbing that darker green. Again, I, I do like a line down as a guide. And from there, going to be doing that triangle shape, but you still want to keep it loose. So I would, I would start with the top. Just making a couple little ones. See? Like that. It's a little wet. Mine's a little too wet. but. And then here you go. So you do like a little one line out and the little forks kind of out from there. I'm going to build on this one. See how I just have the little lines and I'm kind of pushing out little and then you can kind of fill it inside. So down here, up, line, 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 line. And then you can kind of just tap in and fill in the inside. You still want to leave a little white. But see, I'm getting bigger and bigger as we're going down. It's on an angle, it's on an angle. Take your time with this. You want to make a nice pretty tree. And we'll just keep doing this and getting bigger. So you're making like a branch that's in a V, and then you're making little branches off of that. You see this white space, you don't want that. So you want to kind of fill in, 
until you see a little white space. See how I just did that? And you can go ahead and grab some brown, kind of tap that color in here. Some Prussian blue. See how I'm just tapping in while it's wet? And that's going to make different shades of the deep green. But that's how I would make the Christmas tree. You make that B line, you're just taking the brush, and then you're just kind of filling it in. See? You can do a bunch of these all at once. We'll get this all done at once. See? Make your life simple so I can show you. La la la. And see how I just tapped? Did, 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 did. Once you have the shape, and you just you want the outside ones to have some kind of shape so you can tell that they're little branches. Now, if you're gonna do ornaments on this, I would do if you know you can draw your little triangle shape, um, take some masking fluid, just put the little circles. And then you can peel them off after you do the green and then fill them with the color. If you didn't know how to do that. And here I'm going to take some Prussian blue right on the tip of my brush and just kind of bleed some of that blue in. La, la, la. Look it, it's a perfect Christmas tree. <laughs> That's how you do it. So we're working on some more trees. Oh, I'm getting my fingers on it. And then again, how we did the this gray one, I'm going to get some of the colors and mixing the two. Again, do the line down. And you could just kind of do this wiggle. I might add some blue, Prussian blue. Let's make a different color tree. And you just kind of do that wiggle. So now you have a gray one, you have a green one, you have a Christmas tree, right? This is more like a pine tree, like those old, those big old trees. You just kind of wiggle back and forth. You can kind of bleed in some browns some blues, just wiggling this paint. I added it some light green just to make it more interesting. See, and you see I'm just kind of tapping little marks out here on the edge, give it a little life, a little movement. That was a simple one. So you got, you got three trees growing, growing. <laughs> three trees going here and we can kind of work on oh, excuse me moving this stuff around um you know simpler something like this maybe a little more refined so i would again take the brown and go down I'm getting a little deeper here as your guide get a little thicker on the bottom right skinny on top so similar premise to the christmas tree for this one grab your deeper greens gonna mix up some green and but we're gonna go instead of the v up this way it's the opposite way although in the beginning you might want to make it kind of similar so you're just gonna go like this tap 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 back and forth right and then put some ones that go down like this Space them out. And then from here, you're taking your tip of your brush, pushing out some branches off of that branch that you did. So then you have another, make them a little thicker coming out type of tree. It's more like a black spruce tree. Nice deep green. But see how I went down, sorry, it's a little too light, down, and then I went and put these little marks coming off of that. Down. So this one goes down, out, really loose. You can get really kind of technical. I have a couple of little pieces off here, but that's pretty much it. So these are the kind of trees we'll be working with. You know, loose kind of trees like this, a little tighter ones. And this one's kind of loose, goose, loose and goosey, but you get the idea. And then of course the background trees. So take four of these trees, you, you understand how to paint them. And now what do you do with them? I got these Christmas trees, what do I do with them? We're gonna incorporate them to a card.
So let's go to the next step. Okay, so I have my like piece of what I would be, consider my card. You can do whatever size you want. This is kind of a weird shaped card, but it's like a five by six. Um, I had some scrap, so I'm just going to use that. And actually, what you do is you scrap. You can just glue this or tape this on like a craft paper, like a red or gold, whatever you have. And so that's like a that's cheap. That's like a five by seven or something. And then tape it. I have so many. I have so many tutorials of Christmas cards that I show how to do that. So you can go back and look at those. So log cabin. Um, like I said from Patreon, you guys can take the download of the simple log cabin and the reindeer, but I gave everybody the reference material from the reindeer, so it's no biggie for that. And a log cabin, think about this. It's the two lines going across like this. You slant it on the side here, but I would always start off doing the rectangular shape. So we have a rectangular shape here. You can zoom in and see this. You just do your rectangular shape, right? And then you do two lines up here, kind of similar in size, but then lean on the side. And then you do another one here, line, and then down here. And then we do a simple door, which is another rectangle, and the windows, which are square. Now I would fill this all in brown, and then we have the little um, chimney here. Fill this all in brown, and I have these lines going here, like sideways, because it's perspective for the cabin. But I would fill it all in brown, you know, all that stuff. So you can do the trees like we talked about back here. If you want to figure out where you want to put them or just stop painting them. And that's what I would do. I'm not going to show the whole crazy thing with the trees because we just went over this. But I would start off using the background gray tree. You know, that's that's kind of how you want to do it because you're going to paint all the rest of them with green. So you got that light peel. I'm going to water this down a little more gray. We talked about that light tree. Don't paint on the house. <laughs> Put a few of these light gray trees in the background. And if you paint over it, it's no big deal because it's so pale, you know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I just repeated myself. I'm that crazy. Oops. I'm losing papers over here in my desk. So I did like one here, one there. You're not really going to see many of these trees in the background. You could do a little one peeking here, but we're probably going to paint trees right over it. You know, and if you're going to put a bunch of trees around the cabin, maybe put another one back here just in case you paint it. It's better to paint it now than not later. You know, you can't do it later. And I'll just fix this shape because it's kind of goofy. See, your trees come into play. The cabin, we have the browns already ready to go, right? We have those deep brown or the pale um, burnt umber. I'll just kind of throw that burnt umber color, maybe mix it with a little neutral tint. Right in here, simple brown for the cabin. The roof would be like a pale blue gray for the snow. Or well, you could leave it white. I'm just going to throw this color in. I'm really just doing this loosely. Now I have some snow mounds. If you want to have snow mounds, you can just paint, draw like little bumps so you're not painting the whole cabin. You see, I'm going to go ahead like this. And that means the snow is covering that part of the cabin. If you messed up, you can go in with some white gouache. We're going to use white gouache anyway for like some snow, but you can just paint the mounds with the white gouache. Gouache is the best. You just if you don't have any, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on gouache, just buy white and black. You know that's my little uh, go-to arsenal. I would tell people. See, simple cabin color. We'll fill in lines to make it look like a real log cabin. Um, you know, for the chimney, you can keep it gray browns. I might put deeper grays. Let's keep it simple. And then like I said for the roof, we have that gray. I might grab a little more ultramarine blue with that gray. I want it to be more of a bluish gray that's on the roof. Water that down. I always tap off the extra on my tiptoe. And so I'm just gonna kind of paint. It's a little too much, but paint.
paint the edges see how I'm doing that and here I'm trying not to hit that brown because I just painted that if I hit it that's okay you see I'm just gonna paint the edges and a little bit of the one undone here not too much so you're outlining the roof a little bit so you can see it's kind of snow and you can do like a dry brush technique thing where you hold your brush on the side and kind of just push in a little bit of that bluish color all right so let's stop painting some trees like we did I'm not gonna go through all of them because I feel like I want you guys to be more creative you can do it so maybe put one of those ones I talked about that little spiky tree brown tree out here on its own and then you go and grab the deeper greens I had lost some of my greens so I'm mixing up some more so that when we talked about that went like downward I'm doing this really kind of loose and fast but you see I'm going to go in and grab some of that lighter green just to make it a little bit pretty. So that was like the first one we did. This is going to dry. I would do before you're going to head, well, you could do the green tree and then go ahead and add the dark brown. Um, you can do a Christmas tree that's going to cover in front of this too. I'm just having to make sure it's dry. It's not quite dry. But like I said, you go in here in the background. Just put on some of those loose trees if you don't want to paint the real serious trees see I did that solid green color and I can just take the tip of my brush kind of tap in some darker color I can make that nice pretty green tree come back here see a different color tree you want a variety you don't want all the same color and the same style of tree because then it's just kind of this boring no offense but design so you're kind of making a little bit different color green you still see that pretty um, gray one in the background right testing to see so for the cabin once it's dry we can just go and put some darker brown so we mix up some darker browns I use the uh, burnt umber and the neutral tint and just make a darker door color I would even do even a darker color for the trim we didn't talk about that I was going to make a bright yellow window so it looks like somebody's inside and they have power <laughs> which I didn't have for a few days it was very difficult to do some work when you have no power so I'm not going to get super technical on all this stuff and go back and forth making those wiggle kind of trees here trying not to paint the cabin I do want some trees to go in front of it go back and have a nice tree here I might want to stick one of those Christmas type trees we talked about I see I put it right in front of that gray one that's in the background do want some taller ones too so get that brown one back in here play around with the different you know trees that we showed you see this one's a little bit deeper blue I'm not going to get that don't want to get that um, fireplace I'm going to make this a little bit taller. See, I'm filling it in kind of on the side here. See? Looking cute already, right? And then maybe I'm going to do an extra of like a simple tree back here. See? You can put little skinny ones back here in front of the gray one. If you feel like the space is not filled in enough to go around the cabin now um, if you're gonna put a tree in front of the cabin you can do that now and then but I suggest do the windows 
I have just basically cadmium yellow deep. I'll add a little magenta so it's not so bright yellow. Just fill that in before you put in the, the crossbars. Okay, and then we're gonna let this dry and then we're just gonna do simple trees and then we do simple lines for the cabin and we can just snow. So once the yellow is dry, you wanna go ahead and you know, make your simple Christmas tree. I might wanna do one in front um, right here before I put the brown in. So we talk about those V's, you know, going down. And put one right in front. And then you're creating the little branches off the, the V. But this one I put right in front. You can get pretty dark because we can go back in with the gouache, you know, because you want to have snow kind of flying around to make it feel like Christmas. And so if you fill in too much, you have a little snow. If you don't leave enough white, it's no big deal. See? Do a little Christmas tree here. In front. Oops. That branch got a little out of control. I could do a smaller one over here. I had planned on doing one over here all along. Making sure I have my colors. I'm doing this kind of fast. But I showed you guys how you can do it, so. And I'll just bleed in a little Prussian blue here. I feel like it needs another tree over here. So you're gonna look back and you're like, oh, because it's all kind of like, it could be a gray tree, but it could be a color tree. I think I'll do a color tree. You might have to fill it out a little more. You know what I mean? Like green tree. It happens sometimes. So if you did that tree, you kind of maybe have to plan out your trees first. So I just added that one in the background, which is fine. And so for the, the cabin, you take a deeper browns. Remember we talked about burnt umber with the neutral tint here. And like I said, you can just go ahead and make simple. Well, that's a little too dark. You don't want it too light, you don't want it too dark. See, my, my brown kind of is a little too faded. I might have to go back in make a little bit darker. You might want to check yours too. So, you know, no big deal. Just going to be very careful painting around the colors. Just make it a little bit darker. I didn't like how light it came out. You got to be tricky when you do this. <laughs> you don't have the green bleeding, but it can be doable. Okay. So I'll make that a little bit darker. Once you get that brown in, you can take your deeper, darker brown. I'm just gonna do simple lines to indicate cabin. Going across with the paintbrush. I'm still using my number eight. Um, if you're finding it difficult, go ahead and do the four. I'm going back in and mixing a deeper brown for the trim of the door. I'm just doing this really loose in the window. Do that. You can put like the round, I think I drew it in the sketch for Patreon members, almost like the logs, like the edge of the logs. Be kind of cute. Get a little darker here on the edge of your house. Here on here in this section too. And then I would kind of wash in a little deeper color on the side. So water down some of your color. You can go back in and put the line in again if you want to. Just making this a little bit darker. It's on the side. And put a little bit darker color under here. And that's pretty much the cabin. You can 
a black door knob. And then for the snow part, you can still take that blue like we did in the roof, blue gray, and put a little color in the mounds here like that. See, and put a little mound here, out here. Just a little like that. Kind of like curved. And you can take the, the edge of your brush, the edge the side of your brush, tap in the paper towel, do like a dry brush technique of snow. See? Just like this. And now you guys can do this. And the same thing up here, a little bit more darker. Just here for the roof. All right, that's a really cute card. Now to finish off this card, I would just water down a little bit of this white gouache and take out whatever you have and just kind of splatter some snow. See? All right, so yeah, that is the little log cabin card. So for the reindeer card, I gave you the reference photo and you can just do the same thing. You put the little reindeer here. You paint the trees behind him, similar fashion. The gray trees first. You know, we talked about the gray trees. I'm not gonna go ahead and show you every little thing, but you just figure out where you want the gray trees to go. I'm gonna put mine kind of like here. Maybe make them a little fatter, goofier, I don't know. Just background trees. I'll put one there. I'll put one kind of out here. Just simple background trees. I always like to do three of them. Just kind of hanging out. And I'll put one kind of around here. I'll paint over his antlers, it doesn't matter. He's gonna be brown. So the same thing, I mean, um, I'm not gonna go through all the trees, I might just go through how to paint the reindeer to make your life easier. So I would start off with some burnt umber and some neutral tint colors again. Um, maybe burnt umber for the touch of neutral tint for his body. Depending on how brownish, you know, if you want more of a brown that's red, you want more of a brown that's black. And some of this neutral tint. So just gonna wash in the first wash of color on his body. Be fairly light. Again, I'm using the, the eight. Um, I haven't used the four yet. I'll probably use the four for the eyes, the details. I'm just going to wash in a nice, pretty brown. We'll wait to put the other colors after this dries. This is going to dry fairly light, so you might want to do a tad bit darker, like I did before with the cabin. I'm adding in some darker tones because I felt like the cabin got a little too light. So I'm going in and adding a little bit deeper brown now because it's going to dry lighter. It will, no matter what you do. It just does. Um, and you see his face, this is a reference. It's a little whitish round. I mean, like I said, don't get detailed. You don't make yourself crazy. Um, I'm just going to paint right over it. This brown, his whole face. It's so tiny details. You would make yourself nuts. And his little face. See, just a simple wash of brown, his whole body. We don't need to get super detailed with him. He's supposed to be a background kind of cute guy. And it might be really difficult for you guys to paint the antlers before you paint the trees. So I paint the trees and then come back and paint the antlers. So 
So I'm going to let this dry and I'll come back. This part I'm just going to paint the trees in real quick and then we'll come back and we'll finish off the reindeer. Okay guys, so once you get all that done, like you saw me doing the trees, go back, see how the uh, reindeer dried a little light. You can go back and grab some burnt umber, some neutral tint, making a little bit deeper browns. I'm using the number four now, right? I'm gonna wash in some deeper color, a little bit on around his head right here, see? Kind of wash in some deeper color. Now he has the front leg here. So the back leg is gonna be a little bit darker. But listen, if you just make it all a little bit darker, see I'm just kind of making this all a little bit darker. Mostly, in most spots. On the bottom here, I'm adding in some deeper color up top here. So you add the top color, the bottom color, grab a little bit of water and kind of wash it in here. This one is the behind, make it even darker. This one's behind, make that one even darker, right? Up in the ears, he's gonna be so tiny. Zoom in more. Just making this a little bit darker. Ears. So the antlers are almost like brown black. So we grab some of the burnt umber neutral tint or gouache, whatever. And I can't even see mine now, but I'm just going to imagine how they look. Just a little line here, here. You might have to go retrace it. And we go out. Right? That would make it darker then. Don't fret if it doesn't come out right. It's not going to not come out right. You just put little antlers on his little head. Ta-da! Just make them darker. And I'm just going to go, and you can take your brush and outline like his little face here and the ears and the body a little bit. You just outline in a little darker color brown. See how I'm doing that? Right now you see I'm outlining it. Then I'll clean up my brush. Grab a little bit of water and kind of push that paint into his body. And then you can see him better. You see that? Got a little bit darker because his face is leaving a little shadow up there. This is how I would paint my little guy. Again, I got a little, little bit darker on the one that's underneath and just a little bit darker on his legs and his body. Just you know, see, I'm not I'm not really being really specific. I'm just kind of pushing the paint around. Same thing with the face. I'm gonna push some of this paint around here. And then I'm gonna put the black eyes in. And the nose. So I'm gonna let that dry. You could put a little hoof, it's gonna be covered with snow, but you could put the little black hoof here if you wanted to. You don't have to have it covered in snow. If you want the cute little black hoof. Boom. So now I'm using like neutral tint or black wash itself. Just doing the round nose, little bitty eye here. Oops, I got a little too big. And eye here. No one's gonna notice, it's so tiny. I'll just fix that. <laughs> See, I don't fret about this stuff. You guys shouldn't either. And again, the antlers can be just a little bit darker. And outlining around the ear here. So I messed up the eye a little bit. Just kind of push it down, fix it. I think because the paint was too wet over here, but hey. You know it's a reindeer, right? 
I'm just clean up my brush. I'm just gonna push this darker color a little bit more here and a little bit up in here. So it looks a little normal. Okay. So then I'll let him dry. If you want to put like a little shadow, like I showed you with the house, taking my brush, tapping that bluish gray color. See, just a little shadow of this little guy. You don't have to do this, okay? So we're gonna let him dry and then we're gonna splatter um, snow again. Before, before I do that, one little tip. If you have some white gouache and you felt like his face got a little too dark, you can take a little bit of the white gouache, mix it with your brown so it's a light brown. Let's zoom in. If you want to get detailed. I mean, you don't have time to get detailed. So you're making like a really nice pale. It can go on top of the watercolor. And you can fix that. Sorry, mine's not showing up later than it should be, but get the idea. You put a little light brown. You know, you can do the same thing for the ears too if you want to get a little bit lighter in here. Just kind of fix the face a little bit. It's just a little trick. If you kind of messed up. You see? It's looking a little too whitish, so I'm going to go ahead and add some burnt umber to that. But it will lighten it up so it won't look so goofy. And you can just fix it that way. Okay, guys, same premise. Once you have, let me erase this. Once you have all your um, reindeer done, you take the white gouache and you do the same thing with the snow. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. See? Snowing. Oh, in the cabin, it's snowing and the reindeer. So you have your two cards. You can write whatever you want on the top and the bottom. You figured out how to paint the trees, right? And if, you know, the snow didn't get on the tree, you can go in and add the snow with your brush. Don't feel shy about it. If you want to strate strategically stick some snowflakes and or paint like a cute little shaped snowflake, do that. So I hope you guys enjoy this uh, watercolor practice tutorial. So how you can make some really cute cards for yourself. Like I said, there's a reindeer here. You didn't have to reindeer. You could do little presents, you know. Think outside the box, guys. I know you can do it. Just little ideas I can give you. And I know these trees are simple. You can do this. You can do a simple shape, paint some colors. You can do this. And like I said, write the words Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, whatever you feel like. So thank you guys for being awesome. You know, YouTube subscribers. Um, Sorry my stuff was down because, well, I had no power. So I guess word to the wise, I must do way ahead of time a bunch of bundle videos, which I was trying to do, but it's just very hard. So I appreciate you guys so much. So take care, have a great weekend, and I'll speak to you soon.